couple of months back I made a video where I collected solar forecast data and compared that against my actual solar generation each day in order to figure out which solar forecast integration for Home Assistant was the most accurate. You can check that video out if you want to and I'll put a link to it down in the description. It might actually be useful to have a watch of that to give you a bit of context for this video if you haven't seen it already. So after I'd published that video, I had a message from my friend Gary from the Gary Does Solar channel saying, wouldn't it be great if anyone could easily do what you've done and compare these different forecast services against the generation of their own installations? And that got me thinking, yeah, there probably is a way of doing that. <laughs> If you're following Gary's channel then you'll probably already be aware of his solar asthma suite of tools which you can use to model solar generation, battery storage and energy tariffs. If you want to know whether adding a second battery or more panels to your home will be worthwhile then solar asthma is the tool to use. So Gary's thinking behind his question to me was coming from that perspective can a solar forecast comparison tool be made available in a central location on the internet that anyone could log in and use? And on the face of it, that seems totally feasible. But then I started thinking more about the logistics of building that sort of system. Because it requires the long-term collection of data, it wouldn't be an on-demand solution that does a calculation when you log in it would actually need a service running on a server somewhere collecting that data in the background on a schedule. And because every user would be collecting different data from different sources, there would have to be a separate scheduled task for every single user. As you scale that up to more and more users, the compute demand on the back end just keeps increasing along with the bandwidth requirements. And then we have to look at how we collect that data itself. If users want to collect Solcast data, for example, they would need to put their own API keys in, but Solcast would still see one IP address, that's our server, trying to access their systems. It could look to them a lot like a denial of service attack unless we had a commercial agreement in place with them, and commercial agreements with Solcast are expensive. There would also need to be a way of collecting the actual solar forecast generation data from the user's solar inverters, which again might involve creating integrations to work with the APIs of many different inverter brands. And we haven't even touched upon data security here because we would be storing large amounts of user data Data on a public server. So my conclusion for this service is that it's not something I considered feasible to build. It's a huge amount of development effort for what I think would be a very niche and occasionally used tool. But that doesn't mean it's not possible. I think the main people interested in using such a tool are going to be a technical audience. I'm willing to bet most of them already run Home Assistant to get as much data out of their solar and battery installations as possible. So why not use Home Assistant to do this? Using Home Assistant actually solves most of the concerns I have. For starters, each user will be storing their own data, so I don't have to worry about GDPR or security. That's down to individuals to sort. Each user will connect Home Assistant to all of the various solar forecast solutions directly, so we also don't need to worry about any commercial agreements or denial of service concerns with those third parties. And Home Assistant can run scheduled tasks 24-7. Each user is running their own scheduled task, or automations as they're called in Home Assistant, so we don't need any centralised server doing that processing. So that's what I've come up with, an automation for Home Assistant that can be easily installed using a blueprint, which means you can basically configure the whole thing by selecting your data from drop-down lists. There are a few prerequisites though, so this guide is not one for total beginners. You will need to have Home Assistant up and running already, of course. I've got a video on doing that using a Raspberry Pi 5, and if you want to check that out, then have a look in this video's description for the link. You will also need to have connected your solar inverter to Home Assistant somehow, so as it can monitor the generated energy. This is needed so as you have something to compare the forecasts to. How you connect your solar inverter to Home Assistant will vary depending on which manufacturer it is, so you will need to Google around a little bit. I have both SolarEdge and Give Energy Kit in my home, and they are both 
easy to get working. And there are guides on my channel to help you out, so I'll put links to those too. The solar generation energy sensor will need to be a daily cycled energy sensor, so it must reset to zero at midnight every night, and that is really easy to do. You wrap your solar generation energy sensor in a utility meter helper, which has a daily cycle. And finally, you will need to make sure you have configured some solar forecast integrations in Home Assistant. In the demo in this video, I'm going to show you using forecast.solar, which is built into Home Assistant, Solcast, which needs a little bit of extra effort signing up to their website first, and Open Meteo, which is also straightforward, but you'll need to install a special app store for Home Assistant called Hacks first in order to install those last two integrations. I'll put a link in the description to Hacks for you. So then assuming you already have those things in place, I'm going to jump over to a Home Assistant demo now and show you how to set this up. So I'm going to start by showing you that I do have some solar forecast uh, integrations installed. You can see here on my dashboard, I've actually put three forecasts here, one for forecast.solar, we've got one for Solcast and one for Open Meteo. You do need to make sure that you've already configured them. So I'm gonna to go to settings, integrations, and just show you here, forecast.solar, Open Meteo, and somewhere in here, oh, Solcast PV forecast. I've also got an integration for my solar inverter here, so you can see Solar Edge Modbus. If I go to my dashboard again, you can see I've got this sensor here, Solar PV Energy Today. Now this sensor here is actually a utility meter. So if I just go to the settings, you can see utility meter options. I'm using AC energy kilowatt hours here as the input sensor. And all that does is this sensor here just counts up and up forever, but I reset it at midnight every night. So uh, you can see here it goes back to zero. That is quite important because you need a sensor that uh, counts up only the energy for today that you've uh, generated. So you can see here, this one counts all the way up until generation stops and then at midnight, bang, it goes back down to zero until it starts counting up again. So the first thing to configure are a couple of text helpers. So we go down to settings across to devices and services and helpers. There you can see that utility meter I created for the daily cycled solar PV already in the list. And we're gonna go down to create helper and the type of helper we're gonna create is a text helper. And I'm gonna give it the name of solar forecast comparison temporary data. And we click on create. Now we're gonna create a second helper and this is gonna be another text helper, there it is in the list, and this one is gonna be called Solar Forecast Comparison RMSE, and I'll click on Create. Now to make these easy to use, I'm gonna put them on my dashboard over here in Overview. So let me edit this card here, and we're gonna put in input text, there should only be two. We're gonna put the temporary data and input text RMSE. Let's put these at the top and click on save and done. Now these two text helpers are quite important. So this temporary data one is where the automation is gonna store a lot of data. Um, it's not gonna be of any use to you, but it's good to see that it's actually working. So we're gonna leave this here just so as we can see that the automation is working properly. But this second helper here, the RMSE, it's gonna show you the output. So it's actually gonna show you the RMSE, so the root mean square error for each of the forecasts uh, once the automation gets going and it has some data. So this one here is gonna be your main output. Now, speaking of output, one of those output locations is gonna be a CSV file, and we need to create a location for that CSV file. And to do that, we need to install the file editor add-on. Let's go down to settings and add-ons, and we go to the add-on store, and there it is, file editor. So I'm gonna click on install. Now this will take a couple of minutes to install, so once it's done, I'll uh, jump back here and carry on. Oh no, it did it anyway. Absolutely nothing to do. So let's click on start and show in sidebar. So we just need to wait for that to start. Okay, that's all started. That took about 40 seconds to start on my Raspberry Pi 5. So let's jump over to file editor here on the left hand side. Okay, so we're gonna create a folder. So if you go to browse file system, you should see we're in this home assistant directory. If you're not in that home assistant directory, make sure you are. And then we're gonna click on this second icon here that says new folder. So let's click on that. And I'm gonna call the new folder solar forecasts and click on okay. If I scroll down in the list, you can see here is a new folder called Solar Forecasts. 
So the next thing we need to do is tell Home Assistant that it's allowed to save files into this folder because by default it's not allowed to. So we're going to go back up to configuration.yaml and when I click on that it's not going to do anything because if you look here in the background it is already open. So I'm just going to click there to start editing that file. Okay, I'm going to click at the end of this default config line and press enter twice to make a bit of space. I'm going to paste in this config here. Now don't worry, I will put this down in the description. And actually, I'll, I'll put a little article together on my website and there'll be a link to that down in the description. So you can just copy and paste this configuration in um, if you want to. But all we're doing here is we're telling Home Assistant that we are allowing an external directory called Solar Forecasts uh, to be writable. So essentially Home Assistant now knows that it can write to that folder. To apply that though, we have to click on Save and we'll go down to Developer Tools. Uh, we're gonna check the configuration. It's all green, so there's no errors. We're gonna go Restart and then Restart Home Assistant and Restart again and just wait for that to come back up. While we wait for Home Assistant to reboot, I just wanted to remind you to subscribe to the channel for free. It really helps my videos reach a wider audience and it helps me out massively without it costing you a thing. Anyway, let's go and check back on Home Assistant. Right, that's all rebooted. So the next task then is to create a file output entity, which is gonna be the CSV file that we're gonna output some data to. We go down to Settings, Devices and Services, Add Integration, and we're gonna look for File there and choose File. We wanna select the Setup and Notification Service option, and the file path is gonna be slash config slash solar forecast, which is the folder that we've just created, and then solarforecast.csv. Uh, we don't want to add a timestamp to the notification. We're gonna do that ourselves in our own code, and then click on Submit, and it should create it successfully, so finish there. So now for this next step, I'm actually gonna open a second tab here. So as we've got these forecast entities available on the screen for quick and easy reference. So let's go back to the original tab. So we go down to settings, uh, automations and scenes, and then blueprints. And we're gonna go to this blue import blueprint button and paste in the URL of my blueprint. Now this URL is hosted on GitHub, as you can see there. So I will put this link down in the description and on my uh, website, so as you can copy and paste it easily. We click on preview and you can have a look through there if you want at all the code, um, or just click on import blueprint and it'll appear in this list here ready to use. Let's go over to automations now. We're gonna create an automation and it should list your blueprints here. So this one here, solar PV forecast comparison is the one we're gonna select. And this is the blueprint configuration page all ready to go. Now for the temporary text helper, we want to select the solar forecast comparison temporary data input text helper that we had before. And then your RMSE output helper is that one just there. Your output CSV file should be the only one available unless you've got multiple file outputs, but choose that one there. And then for your solar PV generation today, it's that helper. So that's solar PV energy today, which is that helper that was on my dashboard. So I'm gonna choose that there. And for this last one, solar PV forecast, we're basically gonna create a list of all of the PV forecasts that we want to compare. So if I go back to this other page here, let's start off with this uh, forecast.solar one. So I'm just going to copy the entity ID and go back to here and we're gonna paste that in, um, which one is it? Estimated energy production tomorrow from there. Now we need to go find the Solcast one, which is that one there. So we paste that in there, hopefully. Forecast tomorrow from Solcast. And finally, the Open Meteo one. So if we copy that to the clipboard, energy production tomorrow two, it's called. Uh, let's put that in there. Open media estimated energy production tomorrow. That one just there. And we go down to save. We're going to give it a name here of solar PV forecast comparison. You can call it whatever you like, of course, and then click on save. Once installed, you basically have to just leave it alone for a few days to collect data. The very first time it runs, it will just grab the solar forecasts for the following day and save that in the temporary data helper. The second day that it runs, it will get the actual generation data for that day, do all of the RMS calculations and save some data to the CSV file.
So I'm going to force some data here by manually running the automation just to show you what happens. So don't do this in the real world because you'll just end up with total rubbish data being saved. So what I'm going to do is go over to look at the automation here and I'm going to run it once for the first time. Now if I go back over here, you'll see it's filled in a whole load of data in the temporary data field, but it's not calculated an RMSE just yet. And that's because it's literally only got one day of data. So there's no sort of averages or anything it can do yet. If we now go back over and run it a second time, so this would be pretending it's the second day. So we run the actions and we go back over all of a sudden we've got some RMSE data. So you need to remember the order of the solar forecast that you put in. So in my case, this is the RMSE for uh, forecast.solar. This is for Solcast and this is for Open Meteo. So because I've forced this to run um, sort of out of sequence, it's not running naturally every night. Um, this data is absolute total rubbish here. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, but what I can do is force it to run a few more times. So we're just doing um, a few more runs of the uh, automation. Uh, we just have to give it 10 seconds uh, between each run, I think. And if we look back over here, you can see, yeah, there's that number at the beginning should just keep going up by one each time. So this is the third time it's run. So if I go back over here and run it again, and look here, it says three, but in a few seconds time, that should jump to four. Um, there is a 10 second delay built into the automation. There you go, number four. And we can even do it a fifth time. Let's have a look and we watch this here. Um, it should jump to number five in a few seconds. There we go, number five. Now let's just check that the CSV file is working. We go over to file editor and we find that solar forecasts folder here and in there solarforecast.csv. So if I click on that, look at that, we've got lovely data all being populated in this CSV file. So this is one of the two outputs that you've got. So in this, you'll get the date of the forecast. So, I mean, if you're looking at it today, today's date is actually the 29th of July. So tomorrow's forecast is for the 30th of July. And it's got the forecast from forecast.solar, the one from Solcast, and the one from Open Meteo. And then when it ran the second time, it filled in how much energy had actually been generated that day. So if you wanted to, you can copy and paste this data into Excel or Google Sheets or whatever you're using, and uh, you can do all sorts of analysis on it yourself. Um, or you can just go and look at the RMS here and it's doing the calculation of the errors for you. And there you go. This automation will log your solar generation every day and the selected forecasts for those days. So as you you can download and analyze the data as you see fit. You'll also get that running calculation of the root mean square error for those forecasts compared to your actual generation. The lower the RMSE value is, the more accurate that forecast was over the monitored time period. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for free to see more from me and give the video a like if you found it useful. A massive thank you to these guys here for supporting the channel. If you'd like to support the channel by becoming a channel member or a patron like these guys, then check out the links down in the description. In return, you'll get early access to my videos and some bonus content too. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.